Hey there, YouTube. This is a video write-up for the challenge called Rabbit Hole from the Psychonography category of ICTF 2018. Again, the uh, website platform infrastructure is currently down, so I can't show you the original challenge prompt, but you would download this file called rabbithole.jpg, so we can take a look at what this file is, and it's a picture of a couple onions. Um, didn't particularly know what to do with this. I run through the kind of checklist that I do, strings, exif tool, uh, zsteg, but it wouldn't work because it is a JPEG file, stegsolv, jsteg, jstego, etc. Um, but nothing came from it. So I thought I'd go check out my own like personal checklist or some other things just to get an idea for what I could do. This is a CTF Katana, and I occasionally send this link out to some people just to like kind of brainstorm and get some ideas going. But I check out the steganography category, just try and rack my brain to remember things uh, that we could probably use or some tools that might be able to help us. And I remembered Steghide. And this is kind of a, a strange guess, and I really don't like it, and I'm not particularly happy with it, but it is just the fact here is that if you end up using Steghide, keeping in mind that the picture that we're looking at here is of a couple onions, you could try using Steghide to extract some steganography information from this image. You could try passphrase as onions, but that wouldn't work. Uh, if you try it with onion, you do get actually a hit and some results here. So we have this new file, address.txt. Kind of bummed it's not just the immediate flag, but we can check this out. And it looks like a random set of strings. Uh, I didn't, at well, least a string, but a random set of letters, numbers. And I, I, again, I didn't know what to do with this. Like, okay, great. Is this a Caesar cipher? No. Is this some sort of veneer cipher? No. Um, just didn't know what to do, even if it's steganography. So someone on the team had a great idea referring to that this like associates with an onion that this could very well be an address from the onion and that it's a location on the Tor browser. So if you haven't heard of Tor or whatever, you can Google Tor browser and learn a little bit about it, but it's essentially just another network of like network devices and computers to uh, essentially have a segment of the internet that I'm doing a horrible job explaining this, but it's a pretty neat thing. Whatever, for the purpose of our CTF, you can download it and install it and work with it. Um, I have it downloaded for Linux, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that over here, just in Downloads, uh, Tor Browser. I think it's... What options do I have here? N, that's it, the English version. Just put it here, and let's make this recursive so I get the entire directory. Good. I'll Nautilus that Tor Browser and try and fire it up because I do already have this installed, so if I just open that, I should be able to get Tor Browser. So once we go ahead and connect to it, we have the address just in our clipboard, and then every address that we're trying to go to in Tor is .onion. So this will take a long time to load, and uh, we do actually get a result though, and you can see the, the title has actually kind of returned to us. It is a rabbit hole, and that was enough to say, okay, maybe this isn't a complete red herring. Maybe this is something that uh, is actually what we wanted to find within the CTF challenge. Again, this is going to take a long time to load, so I'm going to pause the video until it finally returns to us. Okay, the web page finally returned to us. You can see the time change and the timestamp up top here. So we have this ginormous page. Literally took a look at the scroll bar. It's humongous of a lot of Chinese characters and other whatever those characters are. We just don't know. Um, I could scroll through this and maybe it'll be able to render some of it. Um, at the beginning, in the top of the page, there is a GIF. Uh, the very top, you saw error being displayed. Down at the very bottom, it shows this eyes GIF. And you could view the source if you wanted to, or select all of these and copy them. And that's kind of what I did, is that I went ahead and copied all of this, just so I could actually be able to work with it. So, copy these characters. I put them in sublime text. And when I pasted it, it, again, takes a pretty long time, because it's trying to just work with all of these. And we'll put it here just in the folder that we are working with. I'll call it like uh, all text dot text or something. And then if we wanted to, we could particularly work with this. Um, my team and I spent way too long trying to just decipher what this could be. We downloaded these GIFs. We tried to compare them with the well-known ones that are actually found on the internet if you were to just research them. Um, we tried to see if there was ICTF hidden in this at all in any kind of way. If we just were to translate some of these Chinese characters. And it looked like, even from the weird things that we were thinking, uh, Void Update, shout out to you, man. Um, <laughs> I thought it was like a dictionary just translated into Chinese over and over again because we would see words like fish or jump or apple or strange things. Um, 
But when we were lurking in the IRC channel or the Discord server for support for ICTF, um, we ended up trying to glisten for hints and trying to track some things down. And the admin had said, uh, and props to Yiggles Moto for noticing this and catching on to it, is that the admin had said it's about Unicode encoding from like binary bits. And he went to Google like a lot, just trying to figure out what, would he, what he, could he find. And eventually we, I think it was like Unicode in code and honestly I was the one that I, I, I wanted to put in GitHub or something to get a little bit more results because maybe there's some kind of implementation or something else that's that's doing this that, that this is just a well known thing or some understanding. And Yiggles is the one that had tracked down this base sixty five five three six. Unicode's answer to base sixty four. And again, just exploring these, we went through and read through this GitHub article, this GitHub readme and page and all, and it explained that when you're working with this code, your output, when you have encoded base 65536, is essentially like Chinese characters in random spaces. So we thought, oh, okay, this has to be it. This must be it. And that was awesome. So we uh, took a look at the installation, figured we'd try to understand how to actually use it. It's just npm install base blah, 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 because it's a Node.js application. So sweet, let's take a look. Let's see what we can do. Um, npm install base 65536. And we got it, cool. So now let's set up like a get something. <laughs> we have no idea what we're gonna, and that'll be JS. So let's JavaScript. So they gave us some code here that we can take a look at and try and understand. We're going to end up using the module, so require just like this. Um, we would essentially create a uint thirty or uint eight array of the data that we're working with, but we'll have to be able to read it from the file system because we saved it in all text.txt. .text. Oh boy, I, I clicked that tab. Hope I didn't have Sublime Text break. So that is fs in JavaScript and Node.js. So fs for file system, and we can read it with. Um, X or something or whatever, uh, data can equal fs dot read file sync. And I think we just give it the file name here. So all text dot text. And let me make sure this will actually work for us. Let's node JS, get something JS. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and try and convert that into this uint8 array. Let's say bytes can equal data or new uint8 array. Yep. And I forgot a T here. And if we wanted to, we could just make sure this is this is what we what we think it is. Let's go ahead and run console log on bytes here. Uh, and we've got some of these numbers. So that should hopefully work okay for us. Now let's go ahead and decode it. Let's do decoded equals this base number here dot decode and the bytes. Now, can we console log the decoded form? Oh, looks like we get it wrong here. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, it may help if we put this to UTF-8 so we know it is Unicode that we're reading in. A-OK. -okay. And then let's try this one more time. Uint array. Oh, that requires new. Okay, so that's a new object. And now nothing. Weirdness. Let's try to decode the specific data that we're doing rather than creating the uint array before it. Let's just do that all in one piece so we're not duplicating that uint array here. Console log decoded. Okay, we're getting stuff. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and make that a new file. Let's do fs read file sync, but instead of read, we will write and we'll call it decoded or like new data, whatever this may be. And then no errors. Cool. We can check out. We do have the file new data. Let's see what that is. And it's a zip archive. So let's go ahead and move that to have a zip extension. Let's unzip it. And We've got stuff here. Let's take a look. We've got smash words, whatever these things are. So at this point, I went ahead and just kind of ran for strings. Can I track down um, ICTF? Can I find the flag format? Uh, I don't know. Wanna, I didn't want to use 
are there? Strings ICTF or strings on everything. And then let's grep for ICTF. I don't know where my where my brain was going in that one. And we get the flag. Awesome. So we can cut this up with spaces. One, two, three. Let's rev this and then cut with a delimiter of spaces. Get the third field and then rev it back. So we get just the flag. And that will be our get flag script. in just a second. Let's grab that directory so we can just pretty do it pretty simple in one. Get flag.sh, bin bash. Let's do strings, everything in that directory. Mark that as executable. And we get our flag, redirect that to flag.txt. And we can mark that challenge as complete. Really weird challenge and a lot of struggling. It took us way too long because uh, we just couldn't piece together, okay, for one thing, that steganography lead of onion being the password, then the leap of faith to this is a Tor browser web address, and then tracking down that base 65536 thing. Um, that's just stuff I'd never seen before. So uh, a lot of research, a lot of learning, and a lot of banging our head against the wall, but finally got it. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I can't say it enough. $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. $5 a month will give you early access to everything that I release on YouTube. So it's put in a little Google share drive and pretty neat and nice for you. Don't have to wait until YouTube schedules and releases all these videos. You just have them all at once once I'm done recording them. So... If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. If you're willing to hang out with me, some other cool people, other CTF players, programmers, and hackers, join our Discord server. Link in the description. It is an awesome community, and we'll probably tag team for, like, Pico CTF 2018. That'll come out very soon. Seesaw, Seesaw Red, uh, a lot of the really cool upcoming games. So if you want to hang out, that's the place to do it. Thank you guys so much. Hope to see you on Patreon. Hope to see you in the next video. Have a great time.